my dear friends welcome back to CSCR at home in this video we can study about history of microbiology the important contributions made by Anton van Leeuwenhoek, Louis Pasteur, Robert Koch, then Edward Jenner, Joseph Lister etc. We can study only important points regarding the history of microbiology. The first name is Anthony van Leeuwenhoek. Okay, these are also correct. Okay, what are they? Anton, Anthony, okay. That is Anthony van Leeuwenhoek or you can call it as Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Both are correct. Okay, and he was the first scientist who made accurate observations about bacteria or microorganisms. Understood? Accurate observations was made by Anton van Leeuwenhoek using single lens microscope constructed by Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Okay, the simple microscope composed of double convex glass lenses held between two silver plates. And he observed the microorganisms in his microscope and he called them as animacules. Okay, what was the term? Animacules. Okay, this is important. Animacules. That means microscopic organisms, small organisms. Okay, microscopic animals. Animacules means microscopic animals. Okay, so it was in 1676. Okay, in 1676, he made accurate observations about microorganisms. So, he was the first scientist who made accurate observations about microorganisms. That's why the Anton van Leeuwenhoek is considered as father of microbiology. Understood? Father of microbiology, Anton van Leeuwenhoek. It is in 1676. You don't need to study the year, okay? Father of microbiology, Anton van Leeuwenhoek. In some textbook, they have mentioned that the father of microbiology is Louis Pasteur. But, and the, the, the correct answer is father of microbiology, Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Okay. It's dependent upon the option you have to answer. The next scientist is Edward Jenner. Okay. You might know. Okay. What was his contribution? Vaccine. Okay. Edward Jenner, okay, he developed first vaccine of the world, first vaccine, the smallpox vaccine. He used cowpox virus that is known as variola vaccine, vaccine, variola vaccine, okay, cowpox virus to immunize children against smallpox. Okay, so Edward Jenner developed smallpox vaccine. And who coined the term vaccine? It was by Pasteur. Okay, Edward Jenner developed the first vaccine, that was smallpox vaccine. And who coined the term vaccine? That was by that was by Louis Pasteur. Okay, that we have discussed. And the vaca means cow. Okay, vaca means cow. Vaca means cow that we have discussed. Who coined the term? The term was coined by Pasteur. Next we can study about Louis Pasteur. His time period, his time period 1822 to 1895. Okay. And then Van Hook. 1676, okay, 1676. So, he had proposed the principle of fermentation for preservation of food. The fermentation was by pasture, okay. Then he described the method of pasteurization. The pasture means pasteurization, his name here, pasture, okay. You can see his name here, pasture. Pasteurization for this is the sterilization method. Okay, initial sterilization method. So he proposed the principle of fermentation for preservation of food. Then he developed vaccines, which are they? Here you can see he developed 
anthrax vaccine, then fall cholera, that is fall cholera, that is chicken cholera, okay, then chicken cholera, then rabies. So, he proposed the principles of fermentation for preservation of food, then he described then he described the method of pasteurization. Then he developed vaccines, which are the rabies vaccine, anthrax vaccine, and fall cholera vaccine. That is chicken cholera vaccine. Okay. Rabies, we can call it as hydrophobia vaccine. Hydrophobia vaccine. Okay. Rabies. Hydrophobia. If the question comes like that, who developed hydrophobia vaccine? Who developed hydrophobia vaccine the answer is louis pasteur louis pasteur developed anthrax vaccine then foul cholera vaccine then rabies vaccine understood three vaccines okay anthrax vaccine chicken cholera vaccine and rabies vaccine then what louis pasteur did next he disproved the theory of spontaneous generation of disease okay that we have already discussed Spontaneous generation of disease was disproved by Louis Pasteur. Then he postulated the germ theory of disease. Understood the fermentation, pasteurization, then vaccines. Then he disproved the theory of spontaneous generation and he postulated the germ theory of disease. Understood. Then he postulated the germ theory of disease. Understood. Then liquid media concept. He used nutrient broth to grow microorganisms. And he was the founder of Pasteur Institute Paris. Understood. That's about Louis Pasteur. Next we can study Joseph Lister. Who is Joseph Lister? Joseph Lister is considered as the father of antiseptic surgery. So he introduced phenol for sterilizing medical devices that means the surgical equipments okay for sterilizing surgical equipments he used phenol that means carbolic acid okay phenol and he used phenol to clean the surgical equipments and the wound understood it's known as antiseptic surgery so antiseptic antiseptic surgery as related to Joseph Lister. Understood? Next, we can study Robert Koch. He introduced solid media for the culture of bacteria. Solid media. Who introduced Robert Koch? Then, we have discussed about Elshimus Hesse. Who is she? Suggested the use of agar to her husband. Uh, her husband name was Walter Hesse. He was the associate of Robert Koch. Okay. That means the Elshimus Hesse. She suggested the use of agar to her husband, Walter Hesse. He was associated with. He was an associate of Robert Koch. Understood. So, first, at first, who used agar in cultured media? That was by Walter Hesse. But who was the team leader? That is Robert Koch. So, the answer is, who introduced the solid media for the culture of bacteria? There may be two answers. That is by Walter Hesse and Robert Koch. So, that's also depending upon the option you have. You have to write the answer. You have to choose the answer. Okay. Walter Hesse and Robert Koch. Both are correct answers. Okay. The history is always so confusing. Then Robert Koch also introduced the method of isolation of bacteria in pure culture. Okay. This is very important. That is pure culture. So Robert Koch introduced the method for isolation of bacteria in pure culture. That's why pure culture. Okay. Isolation of bacteria in pure culture by Robert Koch. Then he described hanging drop method for testing mortality. Okay, hanging drop experiment. You might have heard about that. Okay, hanging drop experiment to test the mortality of bacteria. 
then he discovered bacteria such as anthrax bacillus bacillus okay anthrax bacillus it caused anthrax and tubercle bacilli that means mycobacterium tuberculosis tubercle bacilli means mycobacterium tuberculosis then cholera bacilli that means vibrio so he discovered three bacteria we can call it as bacillus anthracis mycobacterium tuberculosis and vibrio okay bacillus anthracis mycobacterium tuberculosis and vibrio vibrio the comma shaped bacteria okay the comma shape that is very important vibrio comma shape comma shape Vibrio, there may be different types, that is Vibrio cholerae, Vibrio parahemolyticus, etc. So many different species. Now we can study Koch postulate. Four postulates, okay. First one, the microorganisms must be present in every case of disease. What was his postulate? The microorganisms must be present in every case of disease, but absent from absent from healthy organisms and how he proved this statement he observed the stained tissue from deceased animal understood he developed some staining method tissue staining method which was like that means the microorganism must be present in every case of disease but absent from healthy organisms okay present in every case of disease but it should be absent from healthy organism coach post light is very important okay you can expect this question it's very important then the second one the suspected microorganisms must be isolated and grown in pure culture okay the suspected microorganisms in this case it was mycobacterium tuberculosis the suspected microorganisms must be isolated and grown in Pure culture. Here he used coagulated blood serum. Coagulated blood serum for the isolation of mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay, he also proved this method, proved, uh, proved the statement. Then the third one, the same disease must result when the isolated microorganism is inoculated into healthy host so the third one the same disease must result when the isolated microorganism is inoculated into healthy host so what he did he injected this mycobacterium tuberculosis into healthy guinea pig understood so he injected this mycobacterium tuberculosis into healthy guinea pig so that was his third postulate and what was the fourth one the same microorganism must be isolated from isolated again from the deceased host. So he isolated mycobacterium tuberculosis from the deceased the guinea pig. Okay, these are the four ghost postulates. This is very important. The microorganism must be present in every case of disease but absent from healthy organisms. The second one, the suspected microorganism must be isolated and grown in pure culture. Third one, the same disease must result when the isolated microorganism is inoculated into a healthy host. Fourth one, the same microorganism must be isolated again from the deceased host. So you need to study coach post slide. It's very important. Okay. Next, we can study about Paul Ehrlich. Okay, Paul Ehrlich. Paul Ehrlich. Okay. He is known as the father of chemotherapy. He is known as the father of chemotherapy. And he was the first to report acid first nature of tubercle bacillus. That means he was the first to report the acid first nature of mycobacterium tuberculosis. So he published his method of staining, staining tubercle bacillus. Understood. But 
then the staining procedure was modified later by Seal and Nielsen. Seal Nielsen. You know the method that is acid first technique. It is known as acid first staining technique. Acid first staining method. It is also known as acid first staining method or Seal Nielsen method, staining method. So this acid first staining is used to differentiate between mycobacterium tuberculosis and mycobacterium leprae. Understood? So this acid first staining method is developed by Seal and Nielsen. Okay. Then he, that means Paul Early proposed toxin antitoxin interaction. And later it is known as Ehrlich phenomenon. So he is the father of chemotherapy. Then he proposed toxin antitoxin interaction. It is known as Ehrlich phenomenon. And he also introduced the standardizing toxin and antitoxin methods. Standardizing toxin and antitoxin method. The antitoxin work was initially done by who? Bearing. Emil. Emil Vaughan. Emil Vaughan Berry. He first he find out diphtheria toxin. Okay. Emil Vaughan Berry. The and Kitasatol. Kitasat. Understood. Antitoxin work. Antitoxin work is by antitoxin work. It's by Emil von Bering and Kitasato. And this toxin antitoxin interaction is proposed by Paul Ehrlich. Okay. And it is known as Ehrlich phenomenon. And he introduced the method for standardizing toxin and antitoxin. Paul Ehrlich also proposed side chain theory for antibody production. Okay. Side chain theory for antibody production. Then he discovered Salvarsen. Salvarsen. Okay, it is against syphilis and arsenical compound. Arsenical compound. It is Salvarsen. Okay, Salvarsen. Understood. Paul Ehrlich, he is the father of chemotherapy. Then he find out Ehrlich phenomenon. Then he introduced a method for standardizing toxin and antitoxin. But initially, the antitoxin, antitoxin work was done by Emil von Behring and Kitasato. Okay, antitoxin work. Then uh, Paul Ehrlich discovered Salvarsen. Okay, it's an arsenical compound. It is used against syphilis. Then Alexander Fleming. That you know. He invented penicillin. Okay. Penicillin. Okay. Alexander Fleming. He discovered antibiotic penicillin. Okay. So he made the accidental discovery that fungus penicillin produces a substance that destroys staphylococcus. Okay. Understood. Okay, these are some of the important contributions. There are so many contributions. If you want to study the history and scope of microbiology, you can refer Prescott. Okay, Prescott. Thank you. If you like this video, please like and share for more videos. Thank you.